you should learn nothing about real estate before you learn about UCC, the Uniform Commercial Code. And a prerequisite to that is understanding what? The security agreement. You shouldn't learn nothing about doing the UCC until you understand what a security agreement is. People tell you about UCC and never mention the word security agreement. That's weird. People talk to you about real estate and know nothing about UCC. That's also crazy. So I wanna get you guys hit to the nuances and that which is prerequisite before executing these tasks. Those of you on YouTube world, let me let you know that I do have the mentorship programs. They do cost. Go to brotherpolite45 at gmail.com if you're interested in being mentored. I coach you 12 days out the month, three days out the week, 30 minutes at a time. And those 30 minute sessions are comprised of the days of the week in which our schedules are the most compatible. It ranges based on three income, six income, or nine streams of income. And then we also have modified renditions of the mentorship because we have very new program opportunities for people. So it's very unique, very unique programs, particularly for Facebook. We got a very unique income generator for Facebook that nothing is topping at this particular point. I've been rocking it, it's real great. So now I'm, sh I'm sharing the information to work with other people. While we do this, we're going to go into some real estate for you. We're going to go into day trading. Let me switch this chair. We're going to go straight to work. Glad that y'all here. I miss y'all. Glad that you all out there. I miss y'all. Make sure you share this video. Of course, when we start getting into the nerdy stuff, you know, we're not going, you know, people don't go around and spread the information like they spread gossip when it comes to us actually developing something of huge interest when it comes to black economics and just economics in general i should say i want to talk to y'all because like i said we can't cash in melanin no matter how much i stroke your ego and tell you how beautiful melanin is and how special it makes you in contrast to other people you can't pay the rent with that melanin information you can't pay the rent with the ufo information but at some point or the other you got to realize if you're talking about black liberation if you're talking about the revolution, the most revolutionary thing you could do is become an entrepreneur. As an entrepreneur, you become a master of your own destiny. I never profess to be Mr. Super Black Power, but so many people critique me, call me a coon and call me so many other names, but my children don't go to public school. I'm in control of their curriculum. Okay, they're not subject to vaccinations. I give them the holistic health alternative. My children were not born in a hospital. My children were born at home. Not under halogen lights, that's a shock to the central nervous system of the child and destroy the divinity of that child before they even get a chance to take their first breaths or be held by their own parents. First people to ever hold my child was myself and then the mother, not someone of another race. And they were born under or to light by candle, fire, light that actually biologically embeds. See, that's black power. And my children didn't go to public school. And my children were not born in hospitals. And I am an entrepreneur. And my wives also are entrepreneurs. We work for self. That is the scariest thing you could ever do. Revolution? You talking about revolution? Revolution is not knowing how much you're going to get paid from one week to the next, except for knowing it's a matter of your creativity to survive from one day to the next. As creative and as hardworking as you are, will be the determining factor if you can survive from one day to the next. That's revolutionary, family. That's revolution. Keep that in mind. So if you're interested in the mentorship, you go to brotherpolite45 at gmail.com and we'll talk to you. Of course, mentorship costs. I always have to say this to people when people call you, yo, can't be for free, brother. I say, can't be. I talk to too many people for free. That would be wild. I only could talk to 24 people for an hour, 48 people for 30 minutes, or 96 people for 15 minutes each out of the day and that would mean there's no space to cook clean wash up teach my children be a husband to my wives there would be no time left so i have to qualify the, the time that i'm spending throughout the day so pretty much we are the market and and what i mean by that is if you if you really sit back what is trend right we are a trend we are the trend we actually drive the actual markets ourselves we do it on a daily basis it's just the fact that the, on the flip side, what it is is that they have studied us for so long that they have learned to be able to mm. make profit off of us. Because like uh, Brother Polite has also indicated before, it's just pretty much where we spend our, our money at. Who do we spend our money with? 
you know, it ties back to, you know, a lot of different things that we just, we do and we do unconsciously. Mm. Um, for example, when I say trend, a lot of individuals may right now have a, a pair of Michael Jordans or a pair of, uh, you know, Yeezys, or they may bank with uh, certain banks or institutions. They may have to pay fees for overdraft fees, etc. cetera. Um, you know, individuals may take flights to different locations and they may go with a certain uh, airline. This is the market. And I mean, pretty much what we're doing is we're actually, instead of spending the money on the front end, we're learning how to spend the money on the back end with the businesses. So pretty much what we do is we join forces with the actual companies, if you will, because we become shareholders. And when you become uh, a shareholder, you pretty much become, a, a, you can say part owner of that company. So like if you bought into Apple, for, for example, you owned a few shares, at that point you become a shareholder. A shareholder would be a person that actually holds partake in that company. So you're no longer just a consumer, you're an owner. Okay, okay. So. Where's, where's the fun part? Because when I see you doing it, you look like you're having fun. You be in your phone, and you don't come out for air. You show me some stuff, and I'm like, wow, whatever that means, right? So I just stop. So you show me things periodically, and I see points, right? And like, for instance, there's Facebook. Facebook seems to be something that you deal with absolutely uh, quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, give us an example of what's taking place on Facebook that's making you money. Okay. Like, for example, uh, Facebook, Instagram, um, Mark Zuckerberg within itself. It's something that I find that we spend a lot of our time on. Uh, I have uh, children that actually check their Facebook uh, pages probably more time than they do anything else. So it pretty much brought attention to me earlier on that this looks like it's going somewhere. So what I pretty much did was on the early stage of Facebook, I bought in on Facebook. Mm. And this is when Facebook initially IPO. And um, what's I, the IPO? IPO is an initial public offering. And what that, is that? That's when it actually goes public to the actual market in order for people to buy on the public trading okay. uh, stock exchange. Got you. I'm saying let's have some of these conversations that we have not had and that your, many of our spokesmen or our orators are not privy to the information, right? Because we've popularized a certain type of rhetoric and now one generation after the next learns how to pronounce that same rhetoric better and better each generation, which means the disconnect for this knowledge continues it perpetuates itself from one generation to the next so we're actually getting further and further away from the very thing that we say we need to evade which is poverty which is the state of dependency on other races which is the inability to erect our own institutions such as schools such as hospitals such as banks well you know what we won't get there if we don't learn this type of information this is the information that makes the world go around so even when we talk about real estate I have to go into and definitely get those UCC courses. I have to go into the nuances of that particular culture, the real estate culture. Because understand, even when you go to school to learn real estate, they don't teach you to be a boss. They teach you to get employed by someone else that's the boss. So you'll never have a hold or a fix on the information that you truly need to facilitate in the capacity in which you need to, to be free. Okay, so we always talk to you about what establishing a free, a fee simple relationship with your property, making sure that you are not considered a debtor by presumption, a debtor by UCC 9 105 in parentheses D can only conditionally own property. And we understand the condition is when the institution or the seller solicits the sale of that property be known to you somebody else will have a vested interest in that property so who you see doing the transaction with you or who's representing the institution they don't let you know that there are several other people banking in on the debt that's called a conditional interest and of course they would do it because the presumption of law stipulates if you go along with it then it must be true okay and this takes you into another terminology called the presumption of the item sonnets now some people say man how can we revoke a claim as such if i come into the note later on but when 
I didn't know, <clears throat> I conceded to this thing being true or being the right thing. Isn't that contradiction? No, it's not. In law, we call that nunk pro tunk. Now for them, it's all about conversation. 95% of any business is conversation. The love is law and family's business. Since family's business, 95% of your family structure is reliant upon great communication. All right. So we're going to go back to this information. I'm speaking as much as I can, as fast as I can, because I know you can rewind this. So that's why I'm speaking at this pace, not to confuse anybody. So you had the conditional interest. It's always about committing to memory the things that you need to survive. Like, for instance, if you was defending yourself, what do you do? What do you say? We understand this. And this is why I'm going to take you into the UCC. The reason why UCC was erected was so we can save time from having to go to court. In law, what is court? Court is the paperwork. The courtroom is the place where we discuss the paperwork. You got it? Court is the paperwork. The courtroom is the forum in which we discuss the paperwork. So this is why we say your paperwork shall always precede you. Therefore, you will not be picking up conversation from where the accuser begins, but where you left off before you even stepped into the forum. So that's why if somebody, if it was a criminal situation, they say, uh, do you understand the nature of these charges? We'll say, I understand the nature of these charges, but not how they apply to me. Well, how do you plead? I'm not here to make pleas, no plea bargains. I'm here to challenge the court and the grounds you lack jurisdiction over organic living soul. Then they may turn around and say, well, we're going to put a plea in for you anyway. And I'm going to say objection. And the grounds you lack jurisdiction over organic living soul make you violation of Article 3 of the Supreme Laws of the Land. See, I'm never going to forget these things. I had to use these things to save my life. I won't point it out. But the thing is this. We have to make culture out of the things that can save our life, that has been tried, proven, tested, and actually works. Why was all of this necessary for real estate? Because you also considered property. That's another conversation, transmitting utility. Link. Whole another conversation. I'm going to take you back to real property, real estate, right? And what I'm going to do is tell you this. Your paperwork has to precede you. The reason why UCC was set up, the Bible of Commerce, the reason why it was set up is so you don't necessarily have to go to court and spend all the fees because if you know how to put into proper context the relationship you have with a company that you are under or a liaison for, and the reason why I say this is because you want to control everything, own nothing. So your trust, as an example, will be the creditor and you will be the debtor. You'll be working on behalf of the trust. You do everything on the largesse of the people by way of the trust. Why? Because you want to control everything and own absolutely nothing. So the way that the trust works, we're going to do this like scripture. <clears throat> God created the whole world. All you have to do is follow God's law, statutes, and commandments. When you follow God's law, statutes, and commandments, you get an entitlement. Your entitlement is the land, right? Mm -hmm. For one generation to come after the other. Where does this all come into place? We're going to see this in the same context of the trust. Well, there's the prophet. The prophet is the medium. He's the liaison, officially from God to man. He knows God exists. Everybody else has this thing in speculation. He's the one walking around telling you God exists. I spoke to him. I went to the mountain. He always come back with the tablets, the stones, the revelations. Everyone has to take his word for it. You know, oh, the angel Gabriel came, say, Ika, in the name of your sister, read in the name of your sister. Always somebody bears witness. Everyone else is not there. He comes and tells everybody else, listen, <laughs> I may not be able to read, but my nigga, this book is good. Whatever the case is, that's how this thing goes down. Well, the same thing is suggested by way of the trust, okay? There's the settler and the trustee or the grantor or the grantee, okay? The trust or the trustee, the oblig or the obligy. These are different terms that are pretty much synonyms for the same. So what happens is the settler or the trustor or the grantor, that's the creator of this world or the trust. The trust is the world. Okay, the trustor is the God, hey, the creator, the ones who wrote the provisions, the laws, the statutes, and the codes, how this law is going to go. And the trustee's job is to see to it that the trust never accumulates any negative asset value. This is all real estate information. OK, so because a trust is property held on behalf of one so that another may benefit. That's what a trust is in short, in its most concise form or in the synopsis. Property held on behalf of one so that another may benefit. So now we have the trust and we're saying to ourselves, the creator is the trustor, OK, or the grantor. 
or okay, or the obligo, but we ain't really gonna use that. That's more when we get into the UCC. So the trust, we have the settler, that's the creator of the laws, statutes and commandments, or the provisions of the trust. And the trustee knows, okay, I'm gonna follow the will and pleasure of the one who created the trust. Once the trustee comes into play, their job is to fulfill the will and pleasure of one who created the trust. Now, the creator is obsolete. No need for him. The rules are set in place. All we need is a trustee. So people come around, so who created this trust? Not necessary. Who's running the trust? Trustee. It was given to the trustee to teach all the other parties that will be involved with the trust so that they may benefit from it or particularly the beneficiaries. So when you follow God's laws, statutes, and commandments, it gives you land. <clears throat> and the land can be inherited by way of the posterity that comes thereafter. Same thing with the trust. You follow the statutes of the trust, and those that are involved with it or those that are considered beneficiaries will benefit thereafter. Okay? Same concept. And the reason why this is done is so you can evade liability legally. So the trust is considered a person, like any other company. So the trust is considered a person, minus the flesh and blood. Your company is considered a person. Then watch what's going to happen. That person needs to correct their status. What is status? Etymologically, if you look up the word estate, it means ranking or status. So status is a state. So the person's status, you think we're talking about people, changing a rank in society and we're talking about the company working on behalf of the flesh and blood the company is considered a person status is a state so the person changing status is the relationship between the company and the real property that is the status correction because you want to rectify this matter that you are a debtor but what you're going to do is behave as a debtor to your trust which will be the creditor which will do the purchases, which will now embark upon the acquisition of property, real property that is. You do this for the purposes of establishing what's called a perfected claim, which is a form of a lien, a first in time, first in line. Whoever has the first lien, no one could come after that and say, man, this person owes me. So if your trust has a lien on your properties, then, and you, you don't own it, the trust owns it, but you're, you're in debt to the trust. You control everything as far as the trust is concerned. If the trust owns it, you control it. But you don't own it, the trust does. So this puts them in a uh, quandary in law. And this quandary was created on purpose to remove you from liability. It's because you want to control everything on nothing, but when we pull, we want our name on every single thing. We think that's wealth. As we get older, we realize, man, I got to protect my name. So guess what? Your business has like a social security number. They probably call it an EIN or a 10. Your business is considered a person, whether it's an S Corp, Type B, gift company, LLC. It's considered a person or a legal person or legal fiction or fiction. All, all of those are the same words or entity, right? So... <clears throat> The company's considered a person. It has a number just like a social security, and it also can get credit just like you. The whole reason for all of that is so you don't have to be involved. But just like they give you cars that do 120 miles per hour and speed limits that never exceed 75 miles per hour, there's always the temptation to do the wrong thing. That's how this works. So they don't let you have your own ability to establish credit through your own profile. But then there's this thing going on where the company's considered a person, and it also has its own number, same my numbers as your social security, but it's not a social security number. And it also can get credit, like a Dunn's number. Okay, you can start, you know, uh, getting credit by way of the company. So the reason why I'm discussing these things, very important information, because you're gonna reap certain real estate and tax benefits when you know better than using your own personal name and creating personal accounts to generate revenue. Why is this important? But many of us are not even aspiring to make real money. So, who gives a damn about taxes? But then we realize on your first million, they're gonna take about $350,000 on the first million. So your first million doesn't even exist. Even if they allow you to keep the first million, it doesn't exist. You make your first million on your second million. 
at any given time, they can put the brakes on any one of us for taxes. Most of y'all out there. They just wait to see if you get successful. Because then there's interest that's accrued from one year to the next. That's how that works. So they just like to see you play yourself for a long period of time and then they come in on you. Like hopefully you do become a success and you do uh, break through the planes that they created for you to fail. And should you do that, they got it all set up for you to go back down where you started from because you probably wasn't taught the technical aspects of success. So we know wealth begins at $150,000 a year and poverty begins for a family of four at $32,000 a year and for an individual at $15,000 a year. There's an over $100,000 gray area space, wherever you want to call that. But the 5% is 5% of the people in the nation make $150,000 a year. And it's incumbent that everybody is supposed to be able to invest at least one third of their annual income, which would be 50 grand. It's the starting point for you to be able to invest and grow any kind of wealth or amass wealth. This is not me saying this. You study standard and pause, S&P index. You can see what they're talking about with their projections for the future. So we want to consider all these things. So now we're back to real estate and we know if we deal with property, we want to be able to protect the assets. So we want to set up a trust. And the reason why we want to set up a trust we're going to make ourselves in debt to the trust. You're going to run everything that goes on with the trust. You're just not going to own anything. Your trust owns it, but you're the one that controls the direction of what takes place. If it's going to be a buy or if it's going to be a sell, that's what you was entrusted for. You just don't own anything. You're protected in that way. You run the company. You don't own the company. Who owns the company? <laughs> Null and void. They created it. They're gone. They're out the equation. That's how this thing works. The only person to be left with is the person that runs it. Can't get in trouble because you do don't own it. The owner can't get in trouble because they left all the power and control to you. So if he was the actual paperwork called the trust, the creator of the trust said, hey, I created it, but I don't control none of the decision making. They come to me. Hey, I control the decision making, but I ain't created. See, that? now we in a quandary. And this quandary was created on purpose to protect you from certain taxes and for you to be able to protect the asset. Most importantly, we're going to go back to you, protecting you. Okay? So this is spiritualities. If you go in your dictionary, look up the word spiritualities. It's the property or revenue generated by the church or the clergy. So in fact, spirituality is the ability to generate revenue or acquire property. The more property you get, the more spiritual you are. I don't make up these words in terms you look it up, you'll see it. I don't make none of this stuff up. This is why I say these words in terms you can look it up. Say, so, damn, spirituality is property generated. Oh, revenue generated or property acquired. This is what spiritualities are. Look up the word spiritualities. You'll see this. They taught you one form of spirituality where you give the money so they can get the property, where you give the money so they can generate revenue. You think you're doing the spiritual thing. No, they're doing the spiritual thing because they're generating the revenue that you give them and they're buying property from the revenue that you made for them. This is how this works. You're a form of spirituality. You think you're going to get something intangible and it's a bowl, milk and honey and pearly gates. I'm not here to antagonize you. I'm just telling you based on the words that you're using, you're using them horribly wrong. And if you use the words wrong, then your drive and your incentive to execute the way you need to is going to be vain. It's going to be messed up. All right, so we got to take back control of the words. And this is why, like, animals are three blind. Uh, pardon me, we're four blind. So you see how when we count to five, we normally draw one, two, three, four, and then we cross it five. The reason why we do that is because we have, as human beings, a hard time seeing anything past four. It becomes ambiguous after four. So we're four blind. Some animals are 16 blind. Some animals are eight blind. You feel me? Some animals have an easy time seeing everything in eight after eight. It's ambiguous. Some animals have the 16. It's ambiguous. With humans, we're four blind. Or five blind, pardon me. So once we go past four, we start staring a little harder to make sure we're not missing nothing. So you get one stroke, two strokes, three strokes, four strokes, and five. Same thing with language. We've been educated to understand words three syllables downward. So as long as it's made up of one, two, maybe three syllables, we're receptive to it. When it's three syllables upward, it becomes a little difficult. So if it's amelioration or restitution of properties, we got amelioration and restitution of properties, we start falling asleep. This class gets ridiculous. And other than that, then they give you acronyms. So you can still fall into that syllable 
uh, type of construct, okay? So they'll tell you QCIP, and it'll be Committee on Uniform Securities Identification Procedure. But it's almost like a, a bunch of syllables for one word, because the word would be QCIP. So they use acronyms and four and five syllable words to shut us down because the level of education that we get is constructed in such a way that we only get three syllables downward with the vocabulary that we're given. So we start tuning out when it's four syllables and five syllable words. It's just true. They got this whole thing figured out. So that's why when you start hearing those new words and those new terms and they, and they put up all these different acronyms, you start growing uncomfortable like, man, you know, this is hard because your brain isn't used to assimilating and processing data in that, uh, of that level. You feel what I'm saying? I'm just telling you all the tricks that's going on in the middle of all this education. You know, they, there's, there's a lot of grimy, shady things taking place. You think you're just having a problem because something wrong with you. No, they thought this thing out. <clears throat> they was going to educate us in our areas a certain way and make sure they educate their children a certain way. And then when you grow into wealth, you learn certain things by default. So we're not growing into wealth then everyone's kind of starting from scratch when we learn and we may fail along the way and therefore there's no information being passed down from one generation to the next. So when there's no inherited wealth, you don't inherit the vocabulary that corresponds with the wealth. Just true. So now we find ourselves here on YouTube, here on Facebook, <clears throat> doing our best to share with you information that most people already said, man, I'm tuning out. There's no rumors or speculations of anyone doing anything gay or disrespectful there's there's no cons going on there's there's nothing negative going we don't got time for that no one's talking about defeating the beast the cracker putting our foot on his neck i ain't got no time for this so you guys are the elite few today that when i know i put up something like this i know my followers i want to learn okay and so we do these programs for y'all and when we do get a little bit into the tricky stuff, we just do it to build enough momentum. So when we do the tricky stuff, we can trick those pe those tricky people into learning this information one day. They realize they've been wasting their time with all the gossip. That's the only reason. So there's a lot to share. <clears throat> this was just an introductory class. I, I, there's so much to cover. I know when we're done, my brother's gonna be like, damn, I should have said that. You know, because that's the vibe I get every time I'm done with a class. I say, man, I would love to have said this, that, and the other. But then I also learned I said exactly what needed to be said for the individuals that came on at that particular time. It's your responsibility to take from this information, go forward, and build. But you definitely need to trust. Okay, you go to ironbrotherpolite.com. You want to protect your assets, <clears throat> understand the significance of the trust. And then once you understand that you will be in debt to the trust, I don't say your trust, but you understand it's your trust. I don't use the wrong term. Just like addendum, that's an extended portion of a contract. But then when we deal with UCC, you say you make an amendment, you don't say you make an addendum. It's just appropriating words and terminologies, right? Whenever you want to make a change in UCC, you do that in the UCC3. The UCC1 is a financing statement. Once you establish a relationship with you and the trust, then what you're going to do from there is say, okay, you're going to put the trust as the creditor, you put yourself as a debtor, or maybe you have an LLC. So you put the trust as the creditor, and the LLC is the debtor, and you put yourself as the trustee there. You would establish all those relationships. Then if you're buying property from someone, or someone's going to owe you something, or you're going to collateralize something like, hey, if you don't pay me this, I get this in exchange. Something like a mortgage. You don't fulfill your mortgage obligation, we're going to take the property. This is what they say. Remember, mortgage. Mort means death, gauge means pledge. So there's a pledge to pay something until you die. Most people are going to get a house around the age of 33, 35 years old on average. That's when they calm down, finally get a house. Your lifetime expectancy is about 71, 72 years old. You're going to get a 30 year fixed rate mortgage. So, presuming that you actually are able to pay for those 30 years straight, you'll be on the verge of death by the time you actually pay. And they also hypothecate the mortgage, and we know how hypothecation means to dig or hold in the ground. And foreclose means to cast the spirit or kick out. So when we look at the word mortgage, it means pledge till you die. We look up hypothecation, it means to dig, bury, or put in a hole. And then we look at foreclosure, it means to cast away, because it kick you out of the house, but it cast you away like your spirit. And then if you don't follow through and getting kicked out of your own home, then they summons you like a spirit to court. You feel what I'm saying? They, like they summons a spirit. <clears throat> I don't make this stuff up. I take the time out. I've been really reading a lot, right? And I feel weird because I be around people who don't give a damn. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Quite often. So I got to come out here to the world and see which one of y'all care about what I'm saying. Because this is the basic information. 
there's some really interesting data that really shows you what the 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 sorcery behind foreclosures or the real estate schema of things. You know, get that book, Stocks and Blondes, on ironbrotherblight.com. I really show you the mechanics behind it. Like this, there's, there's really some witchcraft being employed, and I'm not spooky, but you see it even in the words, what they're doing to people, how the job is to really kill you. But think about it, anything that's gonna make you go into debt voluntarily for 30 more years, you shouldn't even pay for it. But I tell people the biggest scam in the world, in America particularly, is student loan and buying houses. The houses are way too expensive. They don't, they're not worth that amount of money. But the problem is, we got so many different parties making money. <clears throat> you got the financial institution, okay? Then <clears throat> you got the people brokering the deal, helping you get approved of the loan. That's two thirds of it. Then you got what you get in charge, three thirds. So it, those properties are normally multiplied three times in value by the time you start paying mortgage. And then they hypothecate the mortgage. And overseas, <clears throat> they sell them in these investment baskets or these hedge funds because you can do it an innumerable amount of times outside of America. So they mix it up with all sorts of other investments to get people to invest in it. And then there goes the conditional interest and everyone's making money off your debt obligation except for you. And they solicited the seller this property, not on normal terms, but through subprimes where they did the analytics to study your mother's education, your father's education, the, the level of their spending history. They study your spending history, your level of education, what zip code are you located in? And they've made a determination you can't afford anything that's over $100,000 on a mortgage if you was to put down 20%. So they say, since you can't afford nothing over $100,000, we're going to make sure that we sell you only things over $100,000 because if you're going to default, they'll get paid quicker than if you pay for the 30-year fixed rate mortgage because they can write that off, okay, if you go into debt because they have what you call what? Sureties. So you got these guys signing these things off. Every time you make those pledges or those agreements, those death pledges, you got a surety here. And who's the one that's paying for your flawed mortgage endeavors? People that die in Iraq or Afghanistan, and also prisoners, as they pay their debt back to society. The debt that they pay back to society is through flawed mortgage endeavors. That's the debt they pay back through working for free. That's why the labor's free. When you study the uh, Constitution, they tell you, that slavery is abrogated and let's duly convicted of a crime. Now we can enslave you on purpose, we can make you work for free. So you have these modern day slaves, prisoners, who pay uh, or sign a bid bond, payment bond, and performance bond, which tax security. Okay, so people that's in prison is paying for your flawed mortgages. So it's crazy because I fuck around, lose my house, part of my language. I mess around, lose my house commit a crime because I'm losing my mind because I lost my house. Now I'm incarcerated paying for someone else's house. That's the paradox. We got to get you out of that equation. Tell you, take the time out and really study this thing for what it is. Complaining about how bad white people are, you can get that off in three to five minutes. And if you spend three to five minutes, you spend three to five minutes more than you needed to because we don't really need someone to talk to us for two hours about how great we are because of our melanin and how the sun is killing somebody else on the earth. Because guess what? We living under the sun in poverty. They living under the sun and they having problems living under the sun. But they living good under the sun while they having problems with the sun. We living bad under the sun while we have no problems with the sun. I don't think we should be bragging yet. I hope that made sense to y'all real quick. So I'm just saying a lot of stuff. I wish I had more time. Just wanted to give you a rundown, free class over here. Uh, just building with you. Go to ironbrotherpolite.com for the books on real estate and economics. We also have books on metaphysics, but I, you know, Sovereign Bible. <clears throat> I always incorporate both. We call the Kuwina Abunu in the language that I created in our culture. Uh, in Duasusu, which means living language, Kuwina Abunu means spiritual economics. That's what it is, because we get spirituality from being financially free. The more financial freedom you have, the more time you have to read, meditate, pray, travel the world, spend time with your family. We, in, we live in a capitalistic construct. You're only going to get your spiritual freedom if you get financial freedom. So we call it Kuwina Akun, granted the circumstances. It's not that money is the whole thing in our world. We just learn that we have to use it as a catalyst to get to where we need to go metaphysically. But we have to prioritize. So you really do need to learn how to get this bread. Uh, hit me up at brotherpolite45 at gmail.com. 
when you're interested in mentorship, always leave your first, last name, and your phone number. Never email without leaving your phone number. Always leave your first, last name, and your phone number. And for the books and associated DVDs, you're going to go to iambrotherpolite.com.